uh, as all eyes are focused on Washington and what, if anything, gets done in these precious few weeks and months ahead of everyone wanting to see a, at least a, a tax cut, the Senate is going to be out of town. Despite promises of working through mid-August, a lot of them are gone. No big legislation passed, little opportunity to do anything in the next couple of weeks. So are they blowing it? Uh, GOP fundraiser Noel Nickpour, Real Clear Politics Associate Editor, A.B. Stoddard, former Bush 43 presidential writer, Ned Ryan. Um, Noel, leaving town, I thought they had a lot to do. <laughs> they do have a lot to do, and I think that you're going to see <laughs> Trump, uh, we were talking about this earlier, Trump's base, totally solid. Don't need to worry about that because they're going to look at Trump and say, look, it's not your fault. Congress, do nothing. Congress, Senate, that, you know, they're in but chaos. But that appears to be an ever-shrinking part of the public. Well, if you like Trump, you have no rhyme or reason. You like Trump. It doesn't matter what he does. Like he said, he could go into the street and shoot someone. You're still going to like him. He has a very solid core base. I'm it, sure if he shot someone. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them might feel off. Why do you take me literally? Right, oh, okay, fine. But, you know, if, if you're looking at people that uh, when he took office, he said he'd be more presidential, you know, we had hopes of this because he appointed some really great people. Around him are great people. Steve Mnuchin, you know, Gary Cohen, we've got some great people. Wilbur Ross. Right. But if you look at, you know, the constant tweeting, you know, you know, like, I'm going to do this, not, you know, things like that that are driving people nuts, um, I, I think you're going to see a lot of people see, why, does, why do I need Need to be loyal. Why do I need to still have hope for this? I mean, look what's going on with yeah. you know uh, sessions and what he said about sessions. Well, you know, there. Uh, AB started. The one thing I do notice is that um, the, he he could look at the Senate and say, "What the heck? You guys said that you were going to be here for the first couple of weeks of your break, and you're not." Now maybe it's because of the failure of that skinny repeal, whatever they're calling it, AB. But they have other things to do. There is a budget to consider. There is keeping the government lights on past September to consider. Um, what happened to that? Neil, I just think it's appalling that the Congress is trying to leave. There are about 12 to 15 legislative days left, I believe, before the end of the fiscal year. They have to increase, they have to raise the debt ceiling. They have to pass a government funding bill. They have to reauthorize children's health insurance and a flood program. And they have to get rid of, if they want to increase military spending, the sequester caps from the Budget Control Act of 2011. That so requires there's a lot Democrats. To do. There's no plan I, I, on the table. Well, who came up with the idea, all right, we're going to leave town? Who came up with that idea? Well, <laughs> I'm going to blame the leadership since they dropped the calendar. I don't know who else to put the blame on. Yeah, Ned, it just surprised me because if you commit to staying there, and I understand that part of that thinking was, all right, they're going to pass that skinny repeal and they'll have a reason to stay. But right. as Nicole pointed out, as A.B. pointed out, there's still a lot of other stuff they can easily be doing and probably Just should be doing, and they're not. M minor things like, you know, tax reform, Neil. And, and, and it's amazing to me, these guys seem to forget, Trump's not on the ballot next year. All the House members are. Senators are on the ballot. Very good point. And the thing that's amazing to me, Neil, about all of this is, they have, they're going to have to get tax reform at a minimum. And I'm not, I'm, at this point, I'm not looking for even comprehensive tax reform. I'm looking at, you know, get something done in regards to lowering the corporate tax, repatriation of the money. I don't think it'll be reform. I think it'll be, well, lucky if we see some cuts. They might not even be across the board. I, I think it's getting whittled down as we speak. But I, I think, but here's what they're going to have to do, and I guarantee that something, well, I don't want to guarantee something will be done. Something has to be done by the end of the year in regards to tax reform. If they're going to give themselves a chance, the Republicans are on the midterms, because at the end of the day, the base is with Trump. And the base election, midterms are a base election. If they want the base to turn out on behalf of them, they're going to have to pass at least one or two items in Trump's agenda. And Trump, I think Trump's going to have to pull them down there when they get back and say, let me help you help yourselves. You need to pass one or two of these items so the base will turn out for you in the midterms. If you like being leadership, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, you're going to do some of these things and hopefully that'll light a fire under them. I see a lot of cat fighting within the party between each other, but I do want to get to another issue. I want to pick your brains on guys. And Noel, I'll start with you. Uh, Chief of Staff, uh, you know, John Kelly, General John Kelly's been in that job now what, since the beginning of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there has been a little bit more calm yesterday's uh, White House briefing notwithstanding. Um, and assurances apparently coming from Kelly uh, that Jeff Sessions, your job is safe for now. Yep. What did you make of that? You know what? I believe him. And I'll tell you another thing. This proves the theory that I thought. I was like, you know what? I wonder if Kelly took this position with Trump to be the chief of staff on conditions. I, I didn't think like that keeping he, sessions. Well, can, many can, can sessions, meaning, um, meaning this is the way I want to run it. 
this is the mm -hmm. way I see it. This is how I'm very organized, and this is what I need the flow to do this, this, this. If you do not think that you can do this, I'm not the man for you. I really believe that he had a conditional contract with this. This is why you're seeing a lot of things shaping up and whipping into place. I believe when he says to Sessions, you're all right. I do. Wow. This is not and is a that guy. that coming from the president as well? This is coming from Kelly. Okay. And I think that Kelly. The president's is, honoring him. I, I think that he's given him the reins to run the White House. Look, Kelly Ann Conway said, you know, I, I saw the, the door to the Oval Office shut. You know, we are trying to respect Kelly's wishes. They're wanting to conform. Everybody's wanting well, to get some the question right, the, right, for how long, right? I mean, uh, Kelly clearly is getting his way. It would seem you're better at this than I am. How long do you think that lasts? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the thing is, is if, if there's a full cl uh, house clearing and Kelly gets rid of everyone who's fighting with everyone and it's all a unified team, that could work for quite a while if Trump really wants it. He, as we know, is impulsive and he doubles down and doesn't want to be told what to do. So he'll listen for a while. But ultimately, he does get very frustrated when people try to, quote, you know, sort of babysit him. So it makes him very frustrated. So but he we does saw have him tweeting already for today. Guys. Just... He does have a personal fondness for General Kelly. That's right. Um, and that, that could make a difference, right, Ned? No, I, I think so. He does. He respects generals. He respects successful businessmen. And I think the thing that, that Kelly is going to have to do, and I think so far, so far so good, is strike that balance between, listen, at some level, Trump's going to be Trump. At the same time, I think Trump, and I know Trump, has realized there needs to be more discipline on messaging, on decision making, on getting everybody to say you're on the same team, and then discipline on pushing forward. What I've said is the campaign agenda. It was the winning agenda. Let's focus on pushing this forward. So hmm. I think Trump realizes, and I think Kelly realizes as well, listen, Trump's going to be Trump at the same time. If Kelly can bring some discipline and focus and order, I could see this working out very, very well.